Um, was a heck of a win, you know. Um, and uh, the way I look at it, you know, I'll go back and look at the film. You know, um, we talked about in the first half we let miss shots. You know, we weren't as sharp defensively as we've been. Um, now I would say when I go back and watch the film that I would guess that that they hit some pretty tough, amazing shots. You know, so I think they, you, you know, you got to give a lot of credit to Florida. Um, but we just so we got, you know, we're going to make shots, we're going to miss shots. We don't know when we're going to make or make them or miss them. We got to hang our head on the defensive end. Um, we our goal is to get three consecutive stops six times or more. The game we got two in the first half, we got six in the second half. You know and that we stepped it up on the defensive end. There was one stretch there where we, we I think we missed five straight really good wide open threes, and they didn't extend the margin or they barely extended the margin, and that kept us in position. And then and then we knocked down you know obviously some some, some really big plays, um, and I thought we got really good contributions off the bench like Ian Boyd who you know has not been as hot as of late. But boy, those are two big threes. Jason Douglas, Stanley, some big threes in the first half. Uh, and then these two guys, you know, were, were, were terrific. Otis really kind of got it going at the end. And Justin, you know, I don't know what Honor did the last, you know, five minutes, but like he got him to miss, you know, <laughs> once or twice. And it didn't seem like that kid was going to miss. So, um, you know, to not play your best, to be able to come away with a win and not panic it is, is, a, is a sign of uh, maturity. Uh, Dave and Otis, take us through the, the, the plan um, on the last possession and um, how you saw it through. Yeah, just um, run his play with, uh, with two picks on me, you know, and just, you know, uh, time to go play, really, you know. It's, you know that's why I did. You know, whether it was a three or a Trying to, you know, pass or whatever, you know, just, just trying to play. When you're holding the ball out front and time's ticking down, what what are you thinking? What are you hearing? What yeah, you, what, I, what I'm hearing, um, it's just like a, it's just, it's just like a focus, really. It's like everything kind of like slows down a little bit and gets quiet, you know, and um, I don't know, it's just, it's just a natural thing, you know, you just read the uh, play. You know, just see where my guys are on the floor, and just try to make the best possible read. Really. And was that? Was we that just, good? yeah, we just like we got to take the last shot. Like, so we're not shooting early. And the worst thing that happens is we're going overtime. We're going to win in overtime if that happens. So we're going to start at six seconds, and we wanted to set the whole, uh, you know, screen the two top guys in the zone, and then and then let Otis make a read. And there's nobody in the country that I'd rather have the ball make a decision unless the guy on my left, you know? And so it's, it's, it's pretty nice to have those two guys and, and you trust them. And, and again, they both missed some shots, but they stayed the course, you know? And, and so um, that was great. And we've seen them, you know, we, we play situational games all the time in practice and Otis has that candy knack and being able to knock down that shot, you know? Otis, you're one for five on threes prior to the game win. Mm -hmm. That's not even part of your thoughts, sir. Uh, no, not really. You know, um, my teammates and my coaches, you know, they just tell me to keep shooting. Um, they give me such confidence, you know, and um, that's just played a big part, you know, for me. Um, you know, just knowing that they think that that shot is going in, you know, regardless. So it's just helped a lot. So I wasn't even thinking one for five. I was just in there, you know, just in Otis, tonight you tied the program record for most starts here at George Mason. What does that mean for you and the longevity of your career? Um, I just want to uh, thank you know, Coach Hawkins for starting me out of the <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, for real. It's like, nah, nah, it was a I tough mean, decision. <laughs> but, uh, nah, uh, it's cool. You know, I haven't really thought about like the uh, milestones. You know, really this season. It's just probably something that'll mean more to me. You know when I'm done and things like that. I'm just focused on winning and when the season's done then I can appreciate all the all the stuff like that. Justin, what did you see um, on that last play as it unfolded from 
from your bench one? Oh, no, I knew it was going in. Um, it's, he does it every day in practice. Um, and if you ask the team right now who we would want to take that last shot, nine times out of ten, actually, no, ten times out of ten, it's us. So, um, you know, and if he missed it, we weren't going to hang our heads. Like you said, we were going to win in overtime. So it was a win-win for us, and um, we don't want anybody else taking that shot but him. Justin, five and a half minutes left. You guys are down nine. You can't buy a basket. What do you think of and how do you get back in it? Um, defense. That's all it was. Just get our stops, get our locks, and um, – you know, we're gonna fin we knew we were gonna finish off the game. We knew we weren't shooting well. Um, but it's all about the defensive energy and, and and after you know we got our stops, we got good looks and like big big uh, players stepped up. Um, but if we wouldn't be in that game if we didn't get those stops. Otis, I had the fans behind me and heard them, I could feel them. Did you and the ball went in literally with like less than a second left. Did you feel hurried at all because of the timing of it? I know the coach said six seconds you start the play, but did you feel the clock ticking down? And did you feel that emotion from the fans coming out? Uh, not really from the fans when the clock was going down. Like I said, it was just just like a focus level for me. You know, everything just kind of like slowed down really in those last couple of seconds. And you know, um, I think that there's more time than we, than we think it is. You know, in those situations, and we end up you know taking not so much of a great shot because I think. You know, that the, uh, that the clock is you know, going down. So I just knew um, how much time was left and how much time I needed to you know, make a move and get a shot up. So, yeah. Did you, beyond what Otis did at the end there to win it, do you sense with this team, you've been in really good rhythm, good form over the last several weeks. Is this um, uh, the culmination, perhaps, to be in the situation and, and to, uh, I guess, uh, deal with that pressure um, to, to win a game like this? Yeah, you know, I mean, so I would say, I don't know, like we went, like this, like we played uh, James Madison, and then we had a two-week break um, for exams, and it was, like, it was like boot camp. And, and we practiced well beforehand, but from that point on, like this team has practiced as well, if not better, than any team I've ever had in 25 years. And the, the level of intensity and attention to detail has been great, and then, um, and I can't remember last time I had to hear yell in practice, and um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be yelling on Monday, okay, but really, I was seeing that, like, because they come in, and when they make mistakes, they, they're, they're learning how to correct themselves, and then the, the, and then the beauty is, then we get done, and four or five guys are staying late to shoot, or four or five guys are coming in early to shoot. And so the the culture, and you know what, every day you gotta fight for it, but the culture is, is about as good as it can be. And then you let the results happen. You know, and we might still like we might not have made those shots. We we're down nine. Like like we're not gonna be perfect. We're but if the energy and the defensive focus and what and in early in the year when, when mistakes had happen. The guys kind of turned inward, and now they're like, just they're playing, you know. And I think there's a certain amount of pressure, like we were in these situations early in the year, and you know we we're expected to win those games. And I think our guys played a little tight, like you know we weren't supposed to win on the road at Rhode Island or at St. Joe's or or at uh, UMass. Okay, we were supposed to win this game, and 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 that's like the next hurdle is how do you block it all out. Enjoy the you know a pretty good crowd with no students on campus and you know pretty good energy. But how do you block it out and just you know play for your teammates and, and focus on the defensive end? And we did that today. So I think that's as important than if than if we came out and shot sixty two percent from three and you know put up a hundred points. Like this is an important step in our growth. Next question, Andrew. Otis, I know Coach didn't yell about this, but what were you thinking when you, you fouled Cobb there at the end in the paint? I was just uh, hoping, you know. Not thinking. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I was I was mad at myself, you know, but uh, my teammates, you know, they were just like, oh, like, you're good, like, next play, you know, especially uh, Javon, you know. He was, he was just telling me, you know, next play, he's going to miss at least one of these free throws. 
So, I mean, I was just on to the next play, really, you know, thanks to my teammates. Um, you know, they just really helped me with that. And um, once he missed one, I was like, okay, great, you know, it's tied up. And, you know, if we don't win it, you know, this, we can win overtime. So. Oh, good. Thanks, Vince.